By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today I am playing against Pascal, and Pascal is from Switzerland. And he's playing with an Urnum Geddon deck, but there is something different about it. And I'm playing with my Mono Blue Timmy deck. Now, before going to the actual match itself, I quickly want to go through both of these decks. Now, if you'd like to go to the games instantly, you can do so by checking the description below. And there you will find a timestamp. Click on the timestamp and it'll take you directly to game number one. This is the Urnum Gedan deck that my opponent Pascal is playing with today. And as you can see, the white and the green you would expect, but there is something different with this deck because there is some black in there. There's a playset of Hypnotic Spectres and a playset of Dark Rituals. Also, the usual suspects, I would say, two copies of, or I should say, one copy of Demonic Tutor and one copy of Mind Twist. The reason I say two is that they always come in a pair but extremely powerful cards. And I also really like that single anime deck. I think it goes really well um, with the Wrath of God plan. And also, you know, he's playing with a lot of beef himself. So just getting, being able to take back one of your creatures is pretty valuable. He's also playing with three land tags. And as you can see, um, he has basic swamps there in his deck as well. So he can look them up if necessary. So this is the list of Pascal. Now let's quickly take a look at my list. This is the deck that I'm playing with today, and you've probably seen it before on the channel. It's my Mono Blue Timmy deck, and if you look closely, you'll see that I've made a few differences. So I've taken out Spell Blasts and Power Sinks because I felt they didn't work really well with my Maze of If plan. And so I just decided to stick to my five counter spells and what I put in the deck or two air elementals so put a little bit more beef a little bit more pressure and they're just you know beautiful cards and i've also put in a sage of latinam and i'm hoping that the sage will give me some card advantage like i mean sometimes like i've noticed late game my felwer stones are usually pretty useless so i can sack them for cards sometimes the ivory tower is just not coming in the right time on the right moment and then i can at least also also sack it to the sage to draw an extra card and there's also the uh three mistress factories that i've added and you know every mistress factory player knows that as soon as you animate a mistress factory People just want to kill it, you know, they want to get rid of it. And at least now with my Sage, I'm hoping that I can sack it in response and at least get a card out of it. So this is my list for now. Uh, and there's one card I just uh, quickly want to highlight here because it's a new card in my collection and it's the Alpha Protocol Sorcerer. And there's an interesting story attached to this card because I got it at the Frost Giant Cup and the organizer, my brother actually gave it to me but he's not the person that actually gave me the card. So it was, I don't know who gave it to me. It's apparently it's a viewer. So if you're watching, thank you very much for giving me this card. Um, I'm really looking forward to playing out this alpha protocol sorcerer in this game. And also just, this is the first time that I'm actually playing with the card. So thank you very much. Now let's quickly go to game number one. Game number one is about to start and it's Pascal from Switzerland who's sitting on the left with the Urza's Tower and I believe he's on the play here and I'm on the draw sitting on the right with the Timmy Playmat playing my mono blue build and Pascal is playing his Urnum Geddon deck with the Black Splash or actually not a splash it's really black is really a serious color in this build. So if you have a cool name for the Urnum Geddon deck with like black as the third color, let me know in the comments below. Look at this turn two, playing a Dark Ritual, taking it. Okay, playing a Dark Ritual and playing an Urnum Jinn. So that's instant problem for me here. Finding a Library of Alexandria, interesting. So I can use that to kind of go and dig for answers. Obviously I'm playing with four Maze of Ifs, so I should be able to find one and kind of stop that Urnum. There's an attack here for four, going to 16, and a land tax. And that's difficult because I want to play my second blue mana add to counter. Oh, I guess I don't have it because I'm playing a Mishra's Factory. That does mean I'm enabling the land tax, playing a Chaos Orb here. Am I just passing turn? Looks like I'm stopping him here, changing my mind. I'm a little bit in the tank here, and I'm activating the orb on the land tax here. I just don't want him to go search for lands. And flipping here, hitting. So that means it's bye-bye for the land tax. And 
there we go again. Now look at this. He's untapping. He's playing another land tax and hitting me for four. It went very fast with the Urnum Jin. That means I'm on 12 life already. So despite that active Library of Alexandria, I am really stuck in a corner here. And what can I do? Playing another Mishra's Factory. Am I? Looked like I was taking it back there for a moment, but I'm not. Um, the problem here is that I still cannot kill the 4-5. And I actually have to discard a card here. And it looks like it's the Air Elemental. And I'm already on 12. And, and this is looking... Uh, this is looking very troublesome for me here. And this is not what I want to see. So he's looking up his lands. Filling his hand with them. So that's really nice for Pascal. And let's see what he can do. I like this. I like this inclusion of black so far. Like kind of the, the ability to speed up with Dark Ritual. Because it also means that you can pretty quickly play an Armageddon if you have to. And you would only lose two lands in the process. You know, if you have in this case like two lands out, he could play... A Dark Ritual and an Armageddon. And that would actually be pretty good for him right now. Well, he still has to draw for turn. So that's what he just did. Attacking here. So I'm going to 8. I'm deciding not to block because it's not really worth it for me. End of turn probably yeah, activating my library again. So even though I have an active library, there's just so much pressure on the board. And look at this. Finding a control magic and this can kind of help me now let's hope that my opponent doesn't find a disenchant because if he can respond with a disenchant then oh and there's a sword okay that's not too bad and this is actually kind of what i like uh, about playing with control magic is that then your opponent now is losing a creature and a swords so it's a great two for one that means i'm taking four life And the land text gets activated again. Oh, actually, I'm not taking four life. I was already looking at my life total thinking, why is it still on eight? Of course, he's playing the source in response to my control magic, of course. Pascal, well done. <laughs> that makes perfect sense. Sorry, I was kind of uh, uh, kind of losing it here. Uh, couldn't follow it. Anyway, um, Pascal's activated his land text, looked up three basic lands, filling his hand up. Playing a Bayou. Beautiful, beautiful dual land. I don't own any, actually. It's on my list. When you when you play old school, you usually have a very long list of cards you still want to have. And look at this. Playing an Air Elemental. Yes. And this is actually what I wanted to do. This is why I put them in my deck. I just I just find them so, so beautiful. You know, the color composition. It's just a beautiful card. And I mean, it is a 4-4 flying for 5. It's not that bad. Of course, you know, saying your vampire has an upside. Uh, Sarah Angel has an upside. And Air Elemental doesn't. Okay, well, boo-hoo. I'm still playing it. It's a cool card. It's a beautiful card. And, um, of course, Buscal activating his land text again. I'm not sure if he can still find any basic lands, though. Maybe just going for the shuffle effect. Uh Drawing now, attacking for four here. That means that I'm finally able to hurt Pascal a little bit. But hey, he got some life. He's now on 20. And look at this. Wow. Playing a Mahamoti Jin. Now remember, I haven't seen his deck list before. So I don't know that he's actually playing with Wrath of God. Because if he's drawing a Wrath of God now, I mean, that would just be fantastic for him. But at least I'm kind of back in the game. I, was, I came from a losing position. And I kind of feel that with that active library... And those two big beefy creatures, I'm, uh, I'm on the upper hand again. Attacking now with everything that I have. And that means that it's 13 damage coming his way. And he's disenchanting one of them. But still, that's 11 damage. And that means that Pascal is going to 9 life. And I'm also playing an Ivory Tower. Working very nicely with Library of Alexandria, of course. But my opponent has that Sylvan Library. So if he can just find his Wrath of God... Ooh, and this is this is just as good finding, or almost just as good finding a demonic tutor. I wonder what he's gonna tutor because he cannot play out the wrath of God anymore. Paying two here, a balance, of course. I didn't even think about it. 
Oh, there's a counter spell. Oh. <laughs> oh. Just to clarify, like, I've played this game quite a while ago, so I kind of forgot what happened. It's just great to see this display, um, being able to counter that balance. Of course, a balance is a card that you should expect when you're playing against uh, any deck that plays white. And that's it. That's the game. Wow. So I'm actually winning this first game. I really felt like I was going to lose it at a certain point, having that early, having to deal with that early pressure from Pascal. Um, so we're going into game two. Uh, we're actually not sideboarding um, because Pascal didn't have a sideboard yet. Uh, so we're just playing with the 60 cards in our decks. Okay, well, uh, let's quickly go to game number two. Game number two is about to start. So... I want that one. I guess the, the the fact that he couldn't find an Armageddon, uh, the fact that I could counter the balance kind of won me the game. And of course, having a Loa allows you to draw so many cards. So let's see what Pascal can do here, playing a Lantex again. Difficult card. We saw that Lantex going off. Unfortunately for Pascal, he's actually on the play, which is not the best place to be when you're playing a Lantex. Playing a Swamp here. Into a dark ritual again. Oh, and there is a mind twist. And this is painful. And it's very interesting here to kind of see that dark ritual in action. And also show how strong the dark ritual is. And I'm losing three lands here. That could be worse. But I cannot find that second blue source which of course is important for me to counter and look at that pascal cannot find a mana so it looks like we're both kind of stuck and i'm just attacking here for two knowing that he doesn't have the mana open to play a disenchant or a swords and now it's my turn again and this is, this is already a strange game because we're both kind of stuck and i hardly have any cards in hand of course after that mind twist Tapping here, and this is great, being able to cast his Brain Geyser for four, drawing four fresh cards. And also looking at my opponent, now he has three lands, four lands, and playing that Urnum Jin. Four mana is really this, this important amount of mana to get for this Urnum Geddon deck. Playing a clone here over the Urnum Jin. Of course, playing with three clones in this deck, but there is the Swords to Plows here. So I'm being able to hang, I'm able to cast a Mana Drain here, countering it, so that's great. And that means that my Urnum stays alive. And I actually got Forced Walk by the other Urnum Jin. So that means that I can hit him for four and it's unblockable. So he's actually going to 12 now. Things are looking good. Playing another Felber Stone. And passing turn. I don't want to play a land. I don't want to enable that land tax. Attacking me, taking four more damage. Or actually, the, the first four damage for me, so I'm on 16 still. Playing my third Felber Stone. Not really what I'm looking for. I just want to get extra beef on the table. And there's that Swords again. That means four more life. But, I mean, he's going to attack me. And I'm not sure why I didn't attack with the Mishra's Factory here in this case. That's kind of a misplay. I feel I could have dealt two extra damage. And let's see what my opponent is going to do. If he has an Armageddon now, that would actually be great. Playing a Demonic Tutor. And you can really see that black working really well. I haven't seen a Hypnotic Spectre yet, but so far the Mind Twists and the Demonics, and especially the Dark Rituals, have been a big pain for me. And I mean, he is on 12. He should have been on 10 if I would have just attacked with my factory. Um, but still, he's on 12. But it looks like he's kind of getting the upper hand here, having more cards in hand because of that mind twist. And also having a strong 4-5 body on the battlefield. Attacking here for 4. Taking the damage. And let's see what can I do next. Attacking here for two, but there is the disenchant, so losing my factory and playing my pirate ship. So the pirate ship, the four three creature. 
Um, and you can tap it to deal one damage to target creature or player. Also playing a desert, so that means that I can actually do deal two damage after target creature has dealt damage. So what I can do now is, if I want to, block the Urnum Jin and then use the desert to kill it. So let's see if Pascal sees this. Or maybe he wants to trade. We'll, we'll see what's going to happen. At least it's a way for me to kill that Urnum Jin because 5 toughness is a, is a big problem here. I'm blocking on the pirate ship. Pirate ship dies and then I'm activating my desert. Ooh, look at this. <laughs> I, th I think I deserve bonus points here. Uh, I'm really happy with this play. I'm really happy when I get to use the desert. But look at this. He's playing a Hypnotic Spectre and that of course is a problem. I don't think my hand's empty yet. I wonder what's in there. Playing an ivory tower, completely useless. So hopefully I can find that Sage of Latinum that we talked earlier about to kind of sack my artifacts. But of course I'm only playing with a one-off. And he's attacking. And look at that, I have four cards in hand. Oh my goodness, he's playing that Urnum Gan of that Armageddon. Wow, and he had one green floating still and I'm playing a Sylvan. Ay, 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 ay. And that is costing me a card. To be honest, maybe I wouldn't even have played that planes for the simple reason that you don't want to enable my Felwer Stones. But uh, this is not looking good. Now I'm on 14 and I need to find an answer, but my hand is always gonna, it's also gonna be emptied out because of that Hypnotic Spectre. Losing a counter spell here, unable of course to cast it with only one blue mana. But of course I have the cities now, so I have all the blue mana I need, but I'm talking to earlier in the game when it could have been useful and I'm on 12 and I'm already putting the cards there in front of me and this is this is not great I, I kind of feel like I've had a lot of chances here actually Pascal's taking four damage here and an extra one from the city going to seven playing another Armageddon can I counter this no I cannot because he just played out played the counter spell out of my hand Losing an island here. I'm oh, finding a maze of if. That's good. That's lucky for me, so I'm still in it. And it's curious, curious here. And of course, that Sylvan Library is definitely a big problem here. There's not much that I can do about permanence once they're on the board. That's kind of the thing when you're just playing mono blue. I have some boomerangs, but not main board. And look at this, because of that maze of if, the land taxes got activated. And actually, I remember this now. We were playing this game and I said, well, Pascal, just to be completely honest with you, I would have played the maze of if regardless, but I just completely forgot about it because it's such, I, I almost don't see maze of if as a land, but of course it is one. And that means that he gets to fill his, la his hand with lands. Look at that, finding a strip mine, stripping my maze. Again, taking a card, taking a land, no, no, this is looking bad for me. Am I just going to die because of this Hypnotic Spectre? And here you can see my Ivory Tower especially being completely useless. Losing that Timmy. I'm having to pass turn again. The idea of my deck is that I kind of have my maze of ifs for creature threats and then I'll draw into or control magic or simply have enough Timmy's on the board to kill creatures. But it's not working. Going to two here. And this Hypnotic Spectre is doing some work, man. I mean, Pascal, seriously. Respect for this, this hippie. And I think this is end game. This is it. Wow. So that means it's 1-1. One, one. And what an, this was kind of a weird game and I, very interesting. And so that means it's 1-1. One, one. So we're going to game number three. Really looking forward to it uh, to, to kind of see who's going to win this battle. Game number three. And so this is going to be the decisive game. At least I guess I have advantage because I'm on the play. I mean... I'm still a little bit taken aback by the game too when he just got smashed in the face by a hippie. I think the hippie did like 10 damage alone. Uh, but okay, we're, ga we're having a third game, which is cool. So let's see what's going to happen. Obviously, uh, I was thinking Maze of If and Armageddon. It's not 
great. So let's see what I can do here. Playing an ivory tower turn one. So at least that's going to give me some life, hopefully. It's the first time we've uh, we've seen an ivory tower actually doing something useful. In the previous game, it was really just there doing nothing. Playing a flower stone here. And there's a dark ritual again. And again, he's doing something useful with it, playing an urn and get it. And I cannot counter it because I was tapped out. I am finding that maze of if, if though, so that's going to help me here. And playing a Sylvan library, not playing any land, but that Sylvan is probably going to help him. And unable to counter the Sylvan library, or at least I'm not doing it. So I think I'm unable to. Playing a Prodigal Sorcerer. Haven't seen the Alpha version, by the way. Not yet. Hasn't found his way on the battlefield. And let's see if Pascal can find basic lands and if he wants to draw some extra cards. I'm always happy as a Felwerstone player to see my opponent playing a City of Brass because that means that my Felwerstone can make any color of mana. Kind of making it into some kind of super stone. And there's a dark ritual over my Timmy. So taking another life. Playing that mace. And he's passing turn. So 22. Not taking any life from the ivory tower anymore. And what am I going to do? I'm just passing turn again. Looks like it. Yeah, I am. And now Pascal is taking four life for an extra card. That means he's on 18. And I'm saying he's on 18. And I'm thinking, shouldn't he be on 16? And I think he's going to change his life total now. He's also attacking with the Urnum. And of course, I'm playing the maze again. Taking a life here from the ivory tower. And that's kind of one of the little ideas in this deck, actually. And am I playing control magic now? I thought I saw me tapping. I'm tapping four here. Yes, there it is. There's a control magic, which works quite nicely because of the maze of if it's tapped. But here we, yeah, here we see a swords to plows here in response. Don't really mind, it's a two for one, but I would have preferred to just have the um, the Urnum. At least it's not as bad as a Disenchant. Disenchant would have been worse. And there's that Dark Ritual again. And there's a Sarah Angel. And again, I cannot counter, I'm tapped out. But then again, it's not really my plan to counter the Sarahs. And, oh, I just wanted to say, is there another control magic? But it's a Brain Geyser of two, drawing two extra cards here. Passing turn. And if my opponent can now find, oh, he's finding a land tax. I wanted to say, if he can find an Armageddon, then it would have been very problematic for me here. A land tax isn't perfect either, because I have more lands than he does. So he can start filling his hands with lands. And he's playing a disenchant here on the ivory tower. Attacking, sending back the angel. Let's see what I can do. Maybe I'm a little bit in the tank here. I must say I'm really liking those dark rituals so far in the Urnum Ganon deck. And I'm playing Chaos Orb. Am I going to use it? And that's the question. I think I'm <laughs> I'm doubting again. And I'm letting Pascal find his lands here. Um, I feel now looking back at it, maybe I should have just flipped or on the Sylvan or on the Lantex. Uh, let me know in the comments below what you would have done. I do believe that I have a counter spell in hand. And that's why I'm keeping those two blue mana open. So that's probably one of the reasons why I'm not activating the Chaos Orb yet. Paying for life here. And what is he going to do?
playing a dark ritual into an Urnum Jin. And sending back the Sarah Angel. I'm not countering the Urnum Jin. So again, an interesting choice. And I'm deciding to flip. And I'm actually targeting the Sylvan Library here. And there it goes. And I'm thinking, you know, okay, so I'm choosing the Sylvan, which makes sense. But why not then just, why didn't I just do that straight away? Why didn't I just, I guess I was, I'm not trying to kind of rethink. Okay, I guess I'm doing this. I guess I'm, I'm kind of trying to rethink why I decided to do this at the end of his turn instead of at the moment I played the Chaos Orb. The only reason that I can think of is that I was afraid of a possible Armageddon and I wanted to counter it if it would play it out. That's, that's the only reason. Um, but okay, I, I, just looking at the board state right now, he's playing a Demonic Tutor. I have two Maze of Ifs on the battlefield and he has two creatures. And there, there he goes, finding a new Sylvan. Fantastic. Uh, sending back those creatures. And does mean that that Urnum should be untapped, actually. Playing another blue. And there is a Prodigal Sorcerer. So there's a Timmy. Not yet the, uh, the nice Alpha one. And look at this. He's got four mana available. He's got that Sylvan available. And he's also using his land tax again and the nice thing now is that he has that land tax sylvan library combination so if he doesn't like the cards on top um, he can just say okay i'm just going to use the shuffle effect of the land tax because you don't have to take out basic lands and you don't have to have basic lands in your library just to use that shuffle effect you can use the effect as long as your opponent has more lands than you and this is probably going to be the armageddon there's the Armageddon, and there's probably the Counterspell. So that was probably the reason why I was holding those two blue mana up earlier. Just out of fear for that uh, Armageddon. I know just uh, how devastating that would be for me in the current board state. What I just want to do was, is keep my Maze of Ifs and slowly draw into something useful like a Mahamoti Jin. Look at this, a powerhouse. And that Mahamoti Jin, I mean, that's just going to smash that Sarah Angel to pieces if it tries to block. And let's see what Pascal can do. Playing a Wrath of God, interesting choice here. Perhaps he's thinking, I also have an Armageddon for later in the game. Losing a life here. Interesting playing an anime dead. And I'm actually... Oh yeah, this was funny. He was pretty much focused on his Sarah. And we kind of talked about it. And said, you know, I have that Mahamoti Jin. So now he has a 4-6 flyer on his side. And if he can now play an Armageddon again. For a moment there, I thought I was going to play a Control Magic. That would have been really funny playing a control magic over your anime dead creature. And are we now going to see the Armageddon? And there's the Armageddon. It was long overdue. And Pascal finally manages to cast it. And that means a big problem for me here. Taking four damage. I mean, I have a lot of life, but my opponent here just really has the upper hand with and a big creature and a Sylvan library. He is playing that forest, so again, my Felwer Stones get activated, so maybe I can do something with it. I'm playing that Maze of If now, so at least that's helpful. I'm playing with a full playset in this deck, and it's really an important part of my, my tactics. But as you can see, it's very vulnerable to these mass land removal decks. Attacking, I get to send him back. Playing a Mishra's Factory, playing another Felwer Stone. Not finding any blue mana. And Pascal playing an, another Basic Swamp. Playing a Soul Ring. Tapping four mana. And he's playing a Hypnotic Spectre here. And re remember, we are playing Swedish. 
but with Ravenna reprint rules. So that means that there's no mana burn. And it also means that you can basically just play with any reprint as long as it's same art, same frame. And personally, that's fine with me, you know, as long as you just play the same art so I get to recognize the cards, it's all good, you know. Um, tapping something here, playing the Urnum, and pressure is mounting now because I have to choose, do I want to take four damage and lose a card or do I want to take um, two damage and lose a card? That's basically my choice. And I decided to take four damage, drawing an extra card here with the book, trying to find maybe another Mesa Vif or control magic or at least something useful. And I'm taking care of his force here. But that does mean that he gets to use the land tax again. And again, I think I'm doing this because he's taken out all his basic land. So I just want to take care of that force so that he cannot play any more Urnum Gins. Playing another Hypnotic Spectre. And there's just a lot of beef in this deck. And that's kind of what is winning it right now. I mean, he's playing very creature heavy, playing with a playset of Hypnotic Spectres and a playset of Urnum Jins, and I believe two Sarah Angels as well. So that's a lot of creatures. And of course, now with that anime dead, having a 4 6 flying flyer on his side also doesn't help. So I was kind of able to buy myself some turns using that Maze of If. But, I mean, it's now really turning into a problem. Now I have to block the Urnum because I just don't want to die. And look at that. The Counterspell is not being very useful because I cannot find my second blue source. And this is really the showing the power of the Armageddon. And there's a regrowth on Armageddon. Taking my turn and activating that book again because I have no other options it seems I I don't see myself winning this anymore I think uh, Pascal I think the Armageddon's really really did it for you uh, you played very well this third game there we have it Armageddon again uh, that's game you know that's uh, that's it congratulations uh, Pascal thank you uh, for taking your time to play uh, it was fun games, very close, and I'd love to play against your uh, Urnum Ganon deck again. I really, really like the bl the Black Splash. I, th I think you've got something here, especially with those Dark Rituals. They're not just useful for uh, for an Armageddon, but they're also useful to get your Urnum out. They're also useful to get your Hippie out. They're also useful to get your Armageddon out. So there are just a lot of targets for those Dark Rituals. Very, very interesting. Uh, for now, thank you for watching this episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And if you want to support the channel, you can do so by subscribing, liking, or leaving a comment, and of course, spreading the word. You know, it really helps. Um, for now, thank you for watching. If you'd like to see more old school magic games, we have more than 100 videos right now on the channel. Exactly 100. Isn't that crazy or what? Anyway, so uh, you can visit the channel and have a look or you can click on the recommendation videos that are appearing right now on the screen. For now, thank you for watching and see you next time.